Welcome to Brockton Community Access's coverage of election 2015. Today here in the studio we have the two candidates that are running for City Council in Ward 3. Current City Councilor Dennis Aneri, who is the Council President, and Marlon Green, his challenger. We're going to start with opening statements and uh, we're doing ballot order in the beginning and we're going to reverse it in the end. So uh, Dennis Aneri would be first with an opening statement for one minute. Very good. Thank you, Mark. And I want to thank PCA for holding this forum uh, here this afternoon as well. So uh, very appreciative to that and very appreciative to everything that you do and your staff does uh, throughout the community. Um, my name is uh, Dennis Aneri, for those of you that may not know me, but I don't think I'm a stranger to too many people here in the city of Brockton. I presently serve as the city councilor for Ward 3 and have done so for the past uh, 12 years. Let alone 20 years prior to that, I was uh, fortunate to be able to be the school committee representative from Ward 5. So with that being said, I've, I've had over 30 years of proven public service here to the city of Brockton. And I've always worked uh, for the people that have elected me to the best of my ability and will continue uh, to do so. Uh, as Mark indicated, uh, this year here I'm able to serve as the City Council President thanks to the vote and confidence that my colleagues gave uh, to me to allow uh, myself to do that and uh, I did that uh, same uh, job about eight years ago. So with that being said, I, I think that I look forward to the upcoming election. I feel confident that the people are going to uh, re-elect me and believe in me and, and I hope that they'll want me to continue to, to give them the dedicated service that I've been trying to do. Thank you. Okay, Marlon. Mark, thank you and to the VCA for hosting this event today and for your continued service uh, to the other community by um, providing them um, coverage and relevant information to the residents of Brockton. Uh, my name is Reverend Marlon Green uh, and I'm running for um, City Council in Ward 3. Um, I've been a clergy member for uh, over uh, 15, uh, 15 years and serving the uh, community uh, here in Brockton and in Boston as well uh, and throughout Massachusetts and, uh, and southern New England. Um, I've worked hard over uh, the uh, number of years in youth ministry serving our young people, serving their uh, families. And I'm running for um, city council because I'm a concerned citizen. Uh, I'm one who is uh, willing to uh, step up to the plate uh, and serve uh, in a time where strong leadership and proven leadership uh, is needed in the city of Brockton and take it into account the challenges that we're uh, facing. And I look forward to uh, uh, continuing to meet the other residents, hearing their concerns and putting an action plan together. Thank you and I look forward to your vote on November 3rd. Thank you both. Um, I'm going to keep reversing the order so we can uh, go. We'll probably get time for about eight or ten, eight to ten questions. Uh, first thing I want to do is expand upon your opening statement and ask you each what would be your most unique qualification to bring to the table as a city councilor. I'm going to start with uh, Marlon Green. In terms of qualification, um, I've I've served in ministry for over 20 years, uh, 15 years as a uh, credential uh, minister. Um, I've uh, served uh, families uh, in many um, capacities. I've organized uh, many successful community uh, programs through the faith-based uh, community. Uh, I think uh, connecting with uh, families on an individual level, understanding, hearing, and advocating uh, their needs over those many years um, gives me that unique uh, qualification to serve as a city councilor. Okay, and uh, Dennis. Thank you, Mark. Well, I, I think I bring a, a great quality to the table as a member of the Brockton uh, City Council. As I said in my opening statement, I'm not a stranger here to the city and, and to the pub, uh, political process either. Uh, I, I think my experience in my many years that I served as a member of the Brockton School Committee and now even as the years I've served as a uh, city councilor, I think that's the experience that we still need uh, within city government. Somebody that knows and, and understands the, the political process and understands uh, what we have to do contractually with our employees, understands how the budget process works. Um, I think those are the things that are very, very important. And uh, I think in the next uh, couple of years, we're going to have some very difficult times. They're not going to be easy times. Uh, money is definitely, definitely a, a, a strong factor to a problem that we have here in the city and we've got to find ways to uh, bring in other revenues, let alone new businesses, other revenues so that we can continue to maintain an adequate level of service for, for the people. So I think that's what I bring to the, to the table. Okay, um, since um, Dennis, you brought up other revenues, I'm going <coughs> to 
give you guys a series of different revenue solutions that have been proposed to the city. The first one being the recent election that the voters decided by a narrow margin to bring in the casino. Um, councilor, um, I, I think during the public meeting that the councilors all decided they were going to let the people decide, but now that the votes are in, what is your position and how do you feel about the casino, especially because it borders on Ward 3? Well, I think you're correct, Mark. I think uh, what the City Council did was to allow the voters to have their say uh, within this particular issue. And as you uh, mentioned, uh, the vote was a little bit closer than I think probably all had anticipated that it was going to be. Now that we're getting into the back leg of it, I, uh, I truly uh, believe, um, and I still support it somewhat, but is it going to be something that I can actually say that we're going to have here in the city? I don't know that now. I don't know because of the way that the state's um, going through the process and, and, and the way that they're looking at you know, who should have it and who shouldn't have it. And as you know, uh, just recently with the uh, situation with the federal court case with the uh, Indian Reservation and, and that whole issue um, tells me that I don't think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be here. So, but I mean, I, I voted for it as a, uh, as a citizen because I looked at the revenue that, that the city of Brockton needs. And again, I don't think that was the sure all of, of that uh, uh, solution to it either. Okay, uh, Marlon? Uh, Mark, uh, first, I think it was a wise uh, decision of the other uh, council to allow the citizens to have an important voice in this uh, process where the, uh, the casino is concerned. Um, I voted against it um, as a uh, resident, and I would certainly uh, uh, vote against it um, as a uh, city uh, councilor. Um, there are still many concerns uh, in the minds of uh, families, parents, um, and, um, and, and uh, young people in the other city where uh, safety is concerned uh, and the fact that the uh, casino would be uh, located so close to our high school. Um, it's not a promise deal. You're uh, taking into account the new tribe uh, casino uh, proposed um, down in uh, Taunton and many other uh, competitions which would certainly change the outcome or the other uh, promises of this uh, casino. So again, I would, I would vote against it. Okay. Um, along the lines of revenue, but this is a little bit more complicated, is um, a proposed power plant that's been proposed for years. Um, recently, within the last week, the planning board deferred the decision till uh, after the election on December 1st. Um, I do realize that it's in litigation and there's a possibility that you might not be able to comment on it, at least the counselor, I'm not sure. I know he's not named in that lawsuit. But um, talk about the power plant for it, against it, thoughts on it. I'm going to start with Marlon. Mark, again, I think it's important that we listen to the other uh, voice and the concerns of the other citizens uh, where this is concerned. And I think um, there is um, an overwhelming uh, voice and position of the residents, at least in Ward 3, um, that is in opposition of the, um, the, uh, the power plant. I think there are uh, concerns about um, the environmental um, factors and also um, uh, the effects on uh, property uh, value. Um, uh, again, you know, uh, we've seen uh, many uh, deals and ventures uh, where the other uh, city is concerned uh, with respect to um, generating uh, revenues, and those, of, those have not all kind of uh, pan out to be uh, successful for the city and beneficial to the other residents as well. And so I, I'm, I, I remain skeptical and doubtful where the, uh, the power plant is concerned and I'm certainly not in a position at this point where I would uh, voice my uh, support um, and uh, confidence in the uh, power plant being a, vib a uh, uh, vibrant option for the other city where uh, revenue is concerned. Dennis? Mark, I, I think uh, everybody knows my stand on uh, the power plant, and, and that is that I am totally opposed to the power plant, have been uh, since the day the power plant was in discussion before the council back in 2006, 2007. Uh, and as you know, we've been talking about the power plant since 1999. And where is the power plant today? We don't have one. And uh, I can't say much about it because we are in litigation, and as you know, uh, the city council still has and is it still in court in regards to that litigation. Uh, the mayor may have signed an agreement, but that is not anywhere near being a done deal. Not, not one bit is it a done deal. So 
Uh, with that being said, I, I know where my constituents stand and what they voiced uh, their opinion to me many times at my ward meetings, um, and they're, they're very, very strong about it that they are not in favor of the power plant, and I am not changing my tone whatsoever, so I am totally in opposition to it. Okay, let's talk about um, relationship between the different bodies of government, okay? There is a legislative branch, the city council, an executive branch, the mayor, and uh, seems to be that sometimes things end up in the judicial branch. Okay, we're talking about a lot of litigation. At the beginning of the current administration, there was uh, a, a lawsuit filed by the mayor against the city council. Um, how do you feel? Okay, let me let me change my thought. What would you do to ensure a good working relationship between the mayor? in the city council. Let's start well, with Dennis. Thank you, Mark. I, I, and I agree with you. Yes, there was a little bit of a, a hairy type of start when the administration started uh, about 19 months ago. And yes, uh, uh, the mayor did uh, take on a challenge and he sued the city council in court, which did not sit well with members of the city council. Uh, however, I was not council president that particular year. Uh, Councilor Sullivan was council president. So it did, uh, it did start off in a little rocky start. But I think what you need to do, and I think what I've been trying to do as city council president, is to tighten it a little bit so that the communications between the city council and the mayor were a little bit more on a positive side than, than a negative side. And I do have to say that uh, this past year, the, that Mayor Carpenter has worked uh, well with I, and I with him, and even with other councilors. There's still a bad taste of how the whole administration started, and I can't change that or what's in what some, some minds of other councils. But I think we all have to try to work together uh, in a positive way because we're all in it for the same thing, and that's to work in the best interest of the people and try to move this city forward and try to work together so that they can all have, and, and have a better place to live and, and to work, and that's, that's what we try to do. Okay, Marley. Uh, Mark, you know, I think these are some of uh, the issues that we see over and over again and the residents are uh, very concerned about the level of uh, dysfunction and inefficiencies that we see in our government at times. Um, certainly the uh, lawsuit at the uh, beginning of the year between the, the mayor and the, uh, the council um, you know, uh, took some time and it took uh, finances as well. Um, and uh, took away from the important business of the other uh, people. Uh, I think in terms of uh, mending uh, relationships between uh, the council and the other uh, mayor, I think it's very basic. I think that uh, the administration and the council have to remember why they're there. And they're there to serve the best interests um, of the people. And I think that um, there are times when we uh, forget that we end up in situations uh, such as this. And so I think uh, uh, clearly uh, remembering why we're there and who we are, we are accountable to is essential to working together. Can I just have a uh, sure. just a just a quick follow up on that because I do want to make corrections so that the people understand that when when that uh, lawsuit did come down to us, remember it was the mayor challenging City Council President Bob Sullivan for an appointment that was going on to the Water Commission, which the president of the City Council had every right. As a matter of fact. Uh, five people sit on that water commission, and, and the mayor appoints three, and the city council president appoints two. So that's how that lawsuit all uh, started, because he was un unhappy with the particular person that was going on. However, at the end, once he heard the city council was very, very irated about the whole situation, uh, he, he backed down from the lawsuit, and it never cost the taxpayers anything. There was never, never other than one quick hearing in court, and it was resolved at that, at that such way. I just want to make that clear. Okay. Any follow-up? Uh, um, there's certainly a cost associated with it. Um, the uh, attorney for the uh, city had, had to spend his time um, to go into uh, the court. Uh, it took away from the important business of serving the residents of Brockton when you're having to go into court, even if it's just a day, even if it's just five hours, it took time away from the important business of the people to go and to 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 uh, to tend to an issue like this. So uh, there is a cost associated with it. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to give each of you one more. I, I, and I and I won't disagree with that. But just keep in mind, it wasn't the city council that stirred the action. It was the mayor that stirred the action. So you know, uh, the city solicitor is is uh, you know full time. And he works with us each and every day, eight hours a day. So I just want to make make it clear that it was the mayor that you know started that whole controversy, not not the council in itself. Final thought? No. There is still a cost associated with it, regardless of uh, who started, who filed. 
there's still a cost associated with it, and both parties were involved. Let's go to another important issue that is on the table. Um, I'm not sure what the timetable is for it in terms of settlement, but there's a, a um, $88 million price tag on the purchase of a desalinization plant. Um, it's before the council. I don't know if it's going to be settled with this current council or it's going to go into the next one. So currently, Councilor Ianeri gets a say in it. If that switches, you could get a say in it. What's your position on the desal plant? I'll start with Marlon. I'm certainly not in favor um, of the the other plant. Um, I do have uh, great uh, concerns about that, um, concerns along the other lines of um, whether or not the, uh, the city um, has the capacity to effectively uh, run uh, such a plant uh, efficiently. Uh, secondly, uh, I do have uh, concerns about the true value of the uh, plant and whether we're overpaying for um, the other plant. Uh, thirdly, what would it cost the other city in terms of operating costs for this uh, um, uh, plant or to, uh, to bring it up to full uh, compliance or to, uh, to modernize and um, increase the uh, capacity of the, uh, the plant. Those are things that I would want to know and those are things I think the, uh, the residents um, should know as well uh, before this uh, deal goes um, through. Um, so at this, at this point, uh, I, I would certainly be in opposition to the other city um, purchasing um, this plant. At, at the same time, I do understand that it's costing the other city um, half a million dollars a month in payment um, on this plant, and we're really getting uh, nothing in uh, return. Dennis? Well, as you know, Mark, um, you know, that's been discussed before the council, but it isn't really legitimately there as, a, as an issue right now. I think we're waiting for other information uh, to come back to the Water Commission and then to the Water Commission to present back to us uh, through the mayor's office uh, just what he's looking to do. And, and I don't stand in favor of that right at this particular time. Uh, Mr. Green raised some great points in regards to uh, cost factors. We all have a great concern of, of the cost factor of $88 million, then by the time you've filter in how much money the plant may need and then in, in other costs you could be up to $100 million, $110 million and, and I don't think that's, that's the frugal thing to do right at this particular time where especially we're paying X amount of dollars each and every year um, you know, to Aquaria in regards to what they should be doing with the desalination plant and finding us businesses and as you know that's already still before the council. City Council voted in this last uh, budget that we held up that $6.3 million. That $6.3 million is still being held up uh, in the Finance Committee uh, and will probably stay there until we can get other further information from Aquaria. So at that point in time, the taxpayers are pleased that we made that movement to hold that money up because it is a strong cost factor which could reach almost $10 million in three years. Okay, let's go on. Um, also uh, being discussed uh, within the Water Commission and the City Council is the uh, potential increase in water rates, um, up to upwards of a 30% water increase. Um, your position on it, uh, first Dennis. Well, as you, as you know, at the last uh, uh, meeting we had this uh, right before us for discussion, and that also comes into play with some other things that we passed in our last council meeting uh, in regards to the $13.6 million that uh, uh, the mayor was asking us for, uh, for us to pass in regards to things that need to be purchased with, within the city. And right now, uh, the water rate um, increase is still before the city council. It'll uh, come to us uh, tomorrow evening, a matter of fact. I'm not sure how many votes are there. I'm still weighing out my decision on it. I, you know, I have a great concern in regards to going up um, 30 percent. I mean, the way it's going to be casted over the next three or four year period. But we need to do something because of the infrastructure problems and concerns we have within this city. And shame on uh, us and other councils in the past for not doing something that would be done consecutively each year at a small, small token. So this is something that we're, um, we're going to be looking at again tomorrow evening. It will be before the City Council. Uh, and where it stands and lies, I'm just not too sure on that factor. But uh, I, I'm still on a fence on it, to be truthful with you, because I, I just I hate to have to send that type of a, a bill to the, um, to the residents. So we're going to have to wait and see where, where it all lies out. Marlon? At this point, I could not support um, such a measure. Again, we're asking the uh, residents to pay more and to do more uh, and receive very little in return. Uh, we just um, talked about several uh, ventures that the other city um, either was or is engaged in. 
um, with the, uh, the water plant, um, the, um, the casino, and all these different things um, that we've done, and really nothing in terms of direct benefit for the taxpayers. Um, we're asking them to pay more and more every year, uh, but what are they getting in return? Uh, I just cannot support um, such a measure um, at, at this time. There are um, crucial things out there that our residents are asking for, um, and I think we do need to look at um, squeezing out um, inefficiencies um, in our government before we go back to uh, asking the uh, taxpayers to pay more. Okay, thank you. Um, Time-wise, uh, what do we have left? We have eight minutes. Okay, so my next question is um, when you're running for office, you're out on the uh, so-called campaign trail, what is the biggest issue that you're hearing out there um, when you're talking to your constituents or even at the ward meetings? I'll start with Dennis. Thank you, Mark. Well, I think the biggest concern that everybody has right now is public safety. And I think that's something that we work at every single day consecutively. I think uh, the mayor was probably amazed that when he became here 18, 19 months ago that uh, he would be working at public safety every single day, um, every waking moment sometimes you're working at it. And the biggest concern that I have and still have and always hear when I have my, my ward meetings is the fact that uh, people are concerned about what's going on public safety wise. Why are we having the difficulties that we're having? Why do we not have more police officers? And I'm very pleased to say that by the end of uh, November, or middle of November, we'll have nine new officers coming on to, onto the uh, department, which is a great positive. And we also have put away some money so we can put 12 more uh, people back into class so that by the time the end of next year comes, we'll have 21 new people in place uh, to start and to continue to fight uh, crime here within the city. So it's, it's a great, great concern, and, uh, and I hear about it every day, and I hear about it with phone calls each and every day. Um, that's part of, part of being a, a ward counselor. The phone rings every single day, and uh, when there's a concern like that or something going on, whether it even be in Ward 7, Ward 5, it reflects down to everything that happens in Ward 3 as well. And um, I, I can't say enough about that. And I, and I try to do the best I can to, uh, to work with the chief and, and other uh, people here within the city and our police department. Our men and women do a good job at combating it. Thank you. Okay, uh, minute 20 seconds. Go ahead. Uh, public and safety is, of course, the number one uh, concern. Uh, and not just a concern, but the biggest um, fear of the other residents that I talk to, and the moms and dads, um, and the other children that I talk to in Ward um, 3. Uh, parents are concerned about um, whether they can um, take their kids walking down the street around the block um, without hearing a gunshot or see uh, drug activity um, on their um, street. Um, there are uh, families who have been living in Brockton in Ward 3 for over 20 years and uh, because of the um, public safety issue, um, they're not having to uh, consider whether or not they need to uh, pick up and leave and go someplace else. Um, a few years ago, I had my house I'm broken into, and to this day, my uh, nine-year-old is concerned about um, safety um, in the other city, and that's something that we had to, um, to think about um, as well. So um, public safety is yeah, the biggest um, concern and perhaps the greatest um, fear of the residents of Brockton. Okay, um, priorities that you have um, as a city councilor, a ward city councilor. If you could list your top three priorities in order, I would appreciate it. And maybe ex uh, if we have time enough to uh, explain why. I'm going to start with Marlon. Uh, top three uh, priorities. Uh, number one, it would be the, uh, the public safety issue. Uh, in terms of a um, solution, I think um, community uh, policing is uh, uh, the way to go. Um, uh, second uh, uh, priority would be the uh, school system. Um, get our teachers hired, keep the teachers we have on staff, and, and lower the, uh, the classroom um, size um, in our schools, especially in the, um, in the elementary um, school. And third uh, priority would be to uh, provide uh, better and more efficient services um, to the other residents of Brockton. Okay. Dennis, same question. Thank you, Mark. Um, well, definitely public safety. That's the number one issue that uh, I have great concern with, and that's a priority of mine each and every single day. 
The second one I have is education. Naturally, education is dear and close to my heart. For the many years I served as a member of the school committee, I want to make sure that our children have a, a great level of service within the education system, a great, uh, a great, uh, a great uh, educational uh, beginning for them to go off to a, a great college as well. And streets, street repavement, getting accepted streets accepted. We got so many streets that are non accepted streets that I try to work at trying to get them accepted so that we can get them repaved because the taxpayers feel that, you know, with, with the, the money that they're paying in taxes, why can't we have new streets? I work at that each and every day. I'll, I'll continue to have ward meetings so that I can listen to the people and hear all the same types of complaints and, and uh, work towards those, uh, those other uh, priorities that I've listed as well as whatever they may have in mind for me to, uh, to look at as well. Okay, we've come pretty close to the end, and I don't want to go over time. I did that on one of the debates, my first one I did today, so I'm going to stick to the time frame. Sure. We're going to do closing statements. Uh, we can do a, a minute, minute 15. So I'm going to start with uh, Marlon Green. Go ahead. Mark, again, thank you. Um, and uh, thank you to um, BCA um, for hosting um, this event. Um, I'm Marlon Green, uh, Robert Marlon Green. Um, served in ministry for over uh, 15 years and I'm running for um, city council for Brockton um, because I love the city, I live in the city and I'm raising my um, family in the, uh, the city. Um, over um, 13 years ago I chose to move to this uh, city from, uh, from Boston for a better life and I found that um, and um, I believe it is incumbent upon all of us um, to put ourselves in a position to give back. Uh, and this is my way um, of giving back. Um, I believe um, this is a turning point for the other city. Um, and we need the appropriate change to go along and to put solutions in place for the challenges that the city will face. I ask for your vote on uh, November 3rd. It will be my honor and pleasure to serve and to advocate as your city councilor. Thank you. Thank you, Marlon. Uh, Dennis? Thank you, Mark. And again, I thank BCA and uh, members of your staff for uh, having us here uh, this afternoon and uh, being able to present this forum so that our constituents at, at home will be able to watch this uh, over the next uh, week or two. Um, as I said earlier, um, as you all know, I'm, I'm no stranger here to the city and I've been involved with the political arena here uh, for the last 30 years. Proven public service. My record speaks for itself. I know how to get things done. I know where to go to get things done. I'll always continue to work in the best interest of the people of Ward 3. They elect me first and then the entire city of Brockton. I'm very pleased of some of my accomplishments in Ward 3. Businesses that I brought within, uh, within uh, to Ward 3 in itself in our commercial industrial zone area. I stay involved with the Huntington Pack, the Kennedy School Pack. I, I have Ward meetings. I'll continue to have my Ward meetings because I, I think it's a, it's a great way for people to reach out and I hope Mr. Green will join me at uh, my next one. I haven't seen him at one yet, but maybe he'll be able to join me at one of those uh, Ward meetings I'll be having in a couple of weeks. So, I mean, with that being said, uh, being a Ward Council is a 24-7 job and you have to work at it each and every single day. And uh, I'm going to continue to do that. I ask the people of Ward 3 to please hopefully re-elect me so that I can continue to serve. Uh, I feel confident that I can continue to work uh, in the best interest of the people of Ward 3 in the city of Brockton. Thank you. Well, thank you both gentlemen. It's nice that the voters in Ward 3 have two fine candidates running for office. It takes a lot to put your name on the ballot and to serve. Um, stay tuned for more coverage of Brockton Community Access with Election 2015. But most of all, get educated about the candidates and make sure you go out and vote on November 3rd. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.